you're listening to that gets my goat. Never again. Okay, welcome back, everybody. This is Big Ankovich. And this is Rich Outfield. And before this podcast, there was darkness. And then God said, let there be light. I think uh, Odin One-Eye's father, oh, Boar, said they let there be light. Okay, it was Boar that did it. That's a terrible name. Is his name really Boar? Because it's, I think it's B O R. Yeah. Yeah, but couldn't you come up with something better than Boar? Because that kind of means something. <laughs> but that's his name. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, that was his name. Are you sure that that existed? Yeah. There was a father of Odin. Yes. Fine then. His name is Boar, which means <laughs> Odin is Odin Borson. His na- his full name is Odin Borson, just oh. like Loki's full name is Loki Lafeson. Yikes. That one's not as good. Lafay. That was the name of the frost giant. Yeah. Sweet. So what is the name of uh, Thor's mom? Something daughter? I, I don't That's know. That's how they used to do that with the... Um, F- Frigga is not actually his mother in the in the comics and in Norse mythology. Oh, yeah? That's... She's, she's Baldur's mother, and Baldur's not in the movies. Thor's mother was a previous wife of Odin. Hmm. I see. I, I don't know why I'm telling you this. All right, let's. Uh, you uh, want to so, talk about Thor? So I guess we're going to talk about Thor then, judging from this prologue. Uh, we can and cut it out if you want. We talk about the darkness because this movie was called Thor Into two? Darkness. <laughs> Is it? No. That's the <laughs> Star Trek one, right? Yes. I just I, I was taken off guard there because that is a movie title recently. So I thought maybe it was it was the Dark Worlds, World? Thor the Dark World. Yes. Okay. Wasn't Thor two the Dark World? Just Thor. Just Thor colon the Dark World. Yeah. Mm, we haven't had a, a. Oh wait, no, Iron Man two, Iron Man three, but Captain America two is not called Captain America two. Avengers two is not called Avengers two. So. That's it, good though. I like that. I do too. I appreciate that. I like that Harry Potter did that with all of the Harry Potter movies and, and so on. I was always sad. I think you told me that Spider-Man 2 was supposed to be called The Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah. The sequel to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was originally called The Amazing Spider-Man. And marketing people said, you guys can't do that because alphabetically it's wrong and, and all that. And so, yeah, they went with the ultra-creative Spider-Man 2. Two. Two. Yeah, that's always kind of a bummer. It would have been cool if they did that, you know, each s- sequel could be, you know, the spectacular Spider-Man. I know, just the love of that would be fun. Because there's enough How titles different, yeah. that Spider-Man's had over the years that they could have just kept going and going. How many other, what other ones can you think of? Well, Web of Spider-Man, the, the, the sensational Spider-Man, um... <laughs> Untold Tales of Spider-Man, Peter Parker, colon, Spider-Man. Colon? Why'd yeah. you have to bring a colon into this? Gosh. Well, it's usually you. It's colon is up to no good during our podcast. <laughs> so anyhow, I would like to talk about bosoms. Oh, okay. Let's do that then. But first, let's talk about Thor The Dark World, Aww, which you but, and I just bosoms. saw together on Thor's Day. Not Odin's Day, <laughs> which was yesterday. Is that right? Is Wednesday Odin's Day? Yes. Oh. That's why in that Neil Gaiman book, he calls him Mr. Wednesday. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it, it got a little more transformed than Thor's Day did. It certainly did. Wow. Wednesday. Oh, Odin. Yeah, all right, never mind. Uh, yeah, so we waited till Thor's Day instead of Odin's Day to see uh, Thor. And, uh, yeah, we just saw it. It op- did, it, did it actually open today or tomorrow? It comes out tomorrow, but, yeah, by the time this comes out, it'll be months in the past. We are probably both dead. <laughs> We're speaking <laughs> from the grave, from the yeah. past, voice from the grave, telling you about whether Thor's day was good <laughs> or not. So what uh, do you have to say about Thor's day, Thor's film? I don't know. I have a bad feeling I could go on and on and on. Because, oh, as you no. know, I could not be pleased this summer. Iron Man 3 was a huge disappointment to me. And then, all oh, the Man of Steel. <laughs> the less I bring that up, 
the better. But, but the with more each, you bring that up, the more you bring it up. But with each passing hour, I hate that movie more. <laughs> and it's you, fun to hate that movie that much because holy cow, you have know. You, even see, you haven't seen it since the first time that we saw it, right? And yet you still hate it more with each passing hour. Well, just when I hear people talk about it and the things that they responded to or, or just the deaf ears upon which my complaints fall <laughs> makes me hate it all the more. And that night that I saw it, I probably was just like, oh, well, I, I didn't think it was very good. But now, all these months later, it's like, yeah, that was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. F you. It was in the worst movie It made in me history. long for Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy and Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. It made you wish you could watch Troll 2 again. <laughs> Troll 2 is actually pretty good. And so, yeah, my tolerance level or whatever is, it seems to have gone way, way down. Uh, it's hard to please me. Uh, last week we were talking about Ender's Game, and as faithful as that was to the book, it still didn't please me. And just before you and I left to go see this movie, my mom said, hey, did you read the, uh, re there's a review of Thor in the newspaper. And I looked and they gave it like a C minus and the headline was something like the unmighty Thor or something like that. I mean, it's just like this movie is mediocre. And I, I didn't read any of the rest of the review, but the damage had been done to see the headline there and I was just like oh okay that could be good though to see that right before you leave because then it lowers your expectations a little bit and makes the movie all the better when you get there is there a theme song that we could <laughs> a jingle that could I've, play I've never heard one I'm sorry there might be but you're asking the wrong guy <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, I will ask one of you musically talented people to create us a jingle for lowered expectations this was all just a preamble to say how much I friggin liked Thor the Dark World. I, I, I had so much fun watching it. And that was absent in like all these other movies that we're talking about. Just like the dourness and the joylessness of stuff like Man of Steel. There was just good times to be had. And yeah, there were consequences and there were lots of violence and killing and stuff like that. But I had a good time. And uh, I'm going to hit it on over to you because I'm going to monopolize all our time. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll save my little piece before you. Uh, well, take no, no, over I, the rest I'm curious to I, hear whether you also had a good time. I totally agree with you. It's funny because when I saw the first Thor, I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike it. I thought it was, yeah, it was fine. It was fun. And I think that you were telling me, and I think you felt kind of the same way when you first saw it. And then you were telling me how you'd seen it again, like six months later or something. And suddenly you're just like, this movie is not good. I can't believe there's this and there's that. And you started going through all the stuff that was not done well and not done right. And how Jane Foster had nothing to do with the change that Thor made in the film and all this kind of stuff. No reason why they should like each other even. The romance was missing and et cetera, et cetera. And I think I've seen it since then as well, and yeah, kind of come to feel that way about it as well. I, I think this one was, I would say, maybe double what the, they should have put a two on the title, because <laughs> it was twice as good, probably, as the last one. It was really fun. The only thing that I would say was better from the first movie to the second movie was... Kat Denning's character I appreciated better in the first film. Oh, really? I think she had yeah. too much to do in this film, and I wish she would just shut up. <laughs> Here and there, you know? I mean, she, her saying her inane comments is fine, but, like, early on in the film, she does a lot of it. And it's like every time something happens, she has something to say, and she's like, oh, gosh, okay. Next thing, she's going to turn to the camera and say one of these lines. She's just saying too many. It's like, hey, remember me? This is, this is my shtick. <laughs> but other than that, Thor 2 was astoundingly better than uh, the first one. It's funny because Thor 1 was where Thor and Jane Foster are supposed to fall in love. And like you said, you know, it didn't really work didn't really feel like they had fallen in love but Thor 2 sure made you feel like they had made you feel like there was this 
immensely deep connection between the two of them. Can I spoil the end of the movie credit, past the credit sequence? Oh, of course, yeah. All okay. of this, this is going to be spoilerific, kids. We're spoiling it! At the very end, very, 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 very end of the movie, after the credits are, have rolled, Thor comes back to Jane Foster, and they have this freaking slow-motion, come-together kiss, and it's powerful. It was actually really awesome. I, you know, it's weird because it, they actually had two things because of that. You know, they had the funny bit and then they had this, which kind of surprised me. I didn't think that they needed it really, but it was great. I, I liked it. You know, it comes and he, oh, they kiss and oh, everything's awesome. And then you see the, the second little thing that's funny. But yeah, there was a lot of times, you know, when he first came back and he goes up to her and they're, and they, they can't even get out their sentences because they're just like oh it's so great to be here with you and they're like uh, uh you know they say like the first two words or whatever what they're trying to say and then the other one's like uh, what i don't know it, it, i loved it i really enjoyed the bits between them that really seemed like there was something there well part of the the way that that worked was that they were kept apart for the first 20 something minutes of the movie i mean it might have even been longer than that but he was thinking about her all the time, and she was thinking about him all the time. And that lends weight to things. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. But just, you know, the fact that he's staring off into the distance and some character comments, you know, it's like, wow, he can't even enjoy, you know, the fruits of his victory because she's not here. That gives it something that I just didn't feel in the first one. And, and you know, maybe I was hard on the first one the last time i saw it because i ha i saw thor with you mm -hmm. and then i didn't see it again until after avengers came out and my cousin had never seen thor and so we sat down and watched it and oh yeah of course it's going to pale in comparison to avengers but i just i i felt like it really paled in comparison to everything it was it didn't fire on all thrusters <laughs> and uh, with this one it's as though somebody watched Thor with a really critical eye and said, you know, I think we could do this a little bit better. And, okay, this really worked in Thor. Let's do that again, or let's focus on that. You know, here's another I really thing. like Darcy. Let's give her more lines. Dude, <laughs> I think Darcy was way better in this movie. I wanted to blow her friggin' head off in the first movie. <laughs> but the, the thing that I was saying months and months ago about Avengers is I was saying that Someday somebody's going to do a crappy Avengers movie. And we'll see, oh shoot, Joss Whedon was so good, but we didn't know how good it, what he was because we hadn't seen somebody do Avengers before. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And with Thor 2, everybody has something to do. <laughs> that floors me. Like, Dr. Selvig didn't even have to be in this movie. Right. And to, I would have been thrilled to find out Darcy was not in this movie. <laughs> and the Warriors 3 and Sif and friggin' Rene Russo as Thor's mother had stuff to do in this movie. It's like somebody sat down and said, I want to give something to all of these characters. It was like with the Avengers. Right. Where it's like even Black Widow, played by Scarlett Johansson, engaged me and I cared about her and I felt for her and she had funny lines and she had good action sequences. I would never have predicted that we would see a scene where Thor's mother sword fights somebody. You know what I mean? It's just like they gave all of these guys something and a reason to care, a reason for them to be in the movie rather than just like contractually they were obligated to come back for a sequel. Uh -huh. Jane Foster had so much to do like with her mind and with oh, trying to figure this out and it's like science is good and I'm smart and stuff instead of just... If you remember in that first movie, she was just like the geeky girl who's like, look at the pecs on that guy. And then he'd come over and teach her about Asgardian science and, oh, neat. And this is the life, tr the universe tree and, and all that stuff. In this one, she knew things he didn't know because she was smart. The, and Dr. Selvig had invented this thing that, again, Thor, with his advanced knowledge, he, he couldn't do it. Uh huh. I, oh, my gosh, that was good. The only guy who came out... The same, I think, was Odin in the two movies. But, yeah, the stuff they gave Loki to do in this movie, man. He, every scene that guy was in, whether he was silent in a 
jail cell or dicking around on some kind of hovercraft with Thor, he ruled every single scene he was in. <laughs> that guy was having so much fun that it, I, oh my gosh, I grinned the whole time. I, a Loki like grin every time he was on the screen. <laughs> I love his grin too. Yeah, he really has a uh, characteristic smile. That look, it's scary and fun all wrapped into one somehow. And, you know, I'm going to say a blasphemous thing right what? now. What? Not you. You don't do say those kind of things. The the Shroud of Turin was is not actually the blanket that covered Jesus. No, that's not what I was going to say. Loki in Thor The Dark World was better than Loki in The Avengers. What? There's a scene where he talks to his mother in a, the cell. And his mother is comforting him. And... It's all an illusion he has created. Nobody is coming to visit him, and he's alone. Dude, the the depth that they gave this villainous character, what you know what I mean? That uh-huh. spoke volumes that he had he had created his mother to talk to in his cell. Oh my gosh, it makes me want to friggin' go buy a ticket and watch it again. <laughs> that one scene. Now, granted, he was great in Avengers. But he was the Malekith in Avengers, you know what I mean? He uh-huh. was the big baddie. And so you didn't want to see vulnerability and you didn't want to see humanity in this guy. You wanted to see the Hulk beat the snot out of him. But in this, oh my gosh, I really, really dug it. Uh, just that, that he was treacherous and he was a scumbag, but he was also vulnerable. And he didn't despise his brother. You know, fighting alongside his brother, you could tell that there was something between them. Mm-hmm. And that was really, really neat to me. Now, I, granted, I've always liked Loki anyway. I think that Hiddleston is a, a rare find who has elevated the source material, you know. Uh-huh. He is so good and so charming and fun. But to, that, to say that he did Loki better than Whedon did, and maybe that is blasphemous. Maybe I am wrong <laughs> for saying well, that. And Thor's lightning is going to strike you me You better watch out. But I just, I got to say that, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was some really great stuff with Loki, too, and he was really playful and fun. Gosh, the the scene where he first gets out, and he's like, oh, and he makes himself look like the uh, soldier, and then he makes himself look like Thor, and Thor look like the woman, and then he starts becoming, uh, who does he come before? He becomes Captain America as the last one, but who is he before Captain America? I'm trying to remember. He he was Thor, and Thor looked like uh, Sif. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, you want something else? And he did something else, and then he did Captain America as the very last one until Thor <laughs> finally had enough. But, uh, oh, gosh. There was a lot of really funny and fun things, which, like, you, you know, you talked about uh, last week, you were saying uh, Ender's Game just was kind of dour in general. The joy wasn't there in any of the stuff. You only saw a tiny bit of joy, like when they went to play in the battle school. Otherwise, everybody just was angry and wanted to fight all every character all the time. There was tons of that kind of joyful stuff in this. Fun stuff, you know, like once they let Loki out and he's going to do every single person he passes, grabs him. <laughs> you betray him, I'll kill you. You know, they did it again and again and just all those kind of little little things that they put in there was just it made it so much more fun a lot so much more like the avengers than uh the first one was and you know that's not to say that the dark moments weren't dark and the villain wasn't scary and ominous and truly threatening but it just made the experience the up and down roller coaster of the movie more pleasurable and at the end of the movie when thor is fighting malekith it just it was so much better directed and the sequences were so much more inventive and interesting than the other movie which i'm not going to mention but you know exactly what movie i'm talking about where super powered people beat the crap out of each other (laughs) for a long 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 time I mean, just the, the, the portals opening up and cars getting sucked into it and things, have, you know, and then they were in a new world. And then there's a, the ice monster from the first movie or whatever. And then this happened. That was a joy, dude. Just like a, an action sequence that was exciting, but fun. 
Yeah, it was interesting. It was worth watching. It wasn't just a bunch of guys punching at each other. So yeah, it made it so much more worth seeing that somebody actually sat down and thought, okay, how can we make this cool, exciting, fun, a great finale? So yeah, what else you got to say? <laughs> I don't know if I have anything else to say. It's funny, I, I feel like really, I've said enough too. I really, really loved this movie, and I'm so glad that I got to see it, and I would like to see it again, and it, it gives me a little bit of hope. When The Dark Knight came out, and it made so much money, suddenly everybody had to be dark, and everybody had to be unpleasant and unhappy, and that ha ends on a very bleak note. Uh, and then the Avengers came out, and it made, you know, a gazillion dollars. It made more money. And yet we still saw these dour, unpleasant superhero films. Uh, and then this is the first one where it's just like made in the shadow of the Avengers. It felt like the Avengers. Yeah. And I don't know if that's going to make it more successful than if it were dour or whatever. But my guess is that word of mouth is going to be really high on this one. And people will say, oh, I had a heck of a time. Not only should you go see it, I'll, I want to go see it with you. And that's just me. Maybe there are other people. I, whoever reviewed it in the newspaper didn't feel the way that I did. And I'm sure that eventually I'll start hearing negative comments from other people about, you know, well, this didn't make sense. Or how could this, you know, I don't know, the, like the coincidence of Jane Foster finding the, the ether, you know, it's just like that's so contrived. But they wrote it off by that one line that it was destined, that, you know, she was destined to find it so it would bring them together. I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? In Star Trek, the 2009 Star Trek, all of these people end up in the same place at the same time that we know from the Star Trek series. And there was a line where old Spock said, you know, maybe this is the timeline trying to correct itself, bringing all these people together. And they cut that line, and I feel the absence of that line. Because all you need is the one little tiny bit of explanation, and I grab it and say, look, this was all planned. It makes sense. I'm okay if people didn't enjoy it the way that I did. But it was a rollicking space adventure, and there were all sorts of chases and dog fights, and then, you know, battles hand-to-hand -hand and hammer to sword and all that stuff, and it felt like a Star Wars movie to me, a space adventure movie. And so... Uh, was that because of stuff like that, or was it just because the ships kept flying by and making pod racer sounds? Because <laughs> the ships made pod racer sounds. Okay, well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's why I, I felt like... <laughs> but just because the prequels weren't great <laughs> doesn't mean that I don't want more Star Wars movies. If done well... A Star Wars movies hopefully will feel just like this, except for you've got John Williams music, so it's going to be all the better. Yeah, there you go. What was the guy that did it? Brian, Brian Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. The music I thought was all right. It didn't make me dance and around, but I don't. There think you are would want music that would make you dance around in this film. It wouldn't be quite right. It would seem weird. That would be if you had Randy Newman as the. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, it's like. Da -da 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 and you'd be like, wow, this is odd for a Thor battle scene. <laughs> um, one other thing is, you know, the, the movie ends with a sequel setup. And. Is it I, a sequel setup for Thor? Or a setup for something else, you think? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of. Loki sitting on Odin's throne. Oh, okay. Is a sequel set up for a third Thor I thought movie. you were talking about that thing in the middle of the credits. Yeah, that thing I think is setting up Guardians of the Galaxy, but uh, I don't think that that worked. Yeah, it seemed really weird to me. Because A, was perhaps it's... perhaps the worst part of the film. It's Sif and Volstagg that yeah, are there. Yeah, I was waiting for them to shimmer and become Loki or something because it really didn't seem right. And yeah, the Benicio del Toro character was so camp <laughs> that it, that I was just like, wow. And yeah, somebody, my brother in law's kid said that it's Will Ferrell's character from Zoolander. <laughs> right. And that's not far off. 
But yeah, no, I was thinking about the way that the movie ended. It's like there's something unresolved. Come back next time for the continuation of the story. And oh, I can't wait. Good for them, man. <laughs> oh, I, I would imagine that this will make a lot of money because the Avengers made a lot of fans of all the char core characters of the Avengers. And if Iron Man 3 is any indication, you know, this one will make considerably more than the first Thor did. Yeah, hopefully Iron Man 3 didn't scare people back off. Of I, I, I think I'm the only person that really didn't like Iron Man 3. But it was no fun. Special effects sure were great, but I don't remember it being fun. It had fun moments to it. Okay. It was just weird, the stuff that they chose to do with it. But, you know, you had him... I mean, you had, Tony Stark was still Tony Stark in there. He was still mouthing off and saying all the, the kind of stuff. And he, he, there was that kid that he had his interactions with that was always fun. And I don't know. I don't think Thor 3 can come soon enough. But we will see Thor again in Avengers 2. Thor will return. He will. <laughs> uh, Why do they keep doing that? That's really annoying. Oh, see, I didn't think it was that annoying it's at all. Twice, I'm just like, what is this? I think it's cute. I mean, I didn't like it in uh, Iron Man three because it came after a movie that said, "Hey, folks, no more Iron Mans." So it felt like a lie to me. Whereas this one was just like, "Hey, hey, don't worry, folks, Thor will return." Which, uh, of course, you was obvious from everything that they finished the movie up with. You're like, "Oh yeah, of course he's going to return." We all saw the setup for the sequel, <laughs> but it'll be fun to see if. In Avengers 2, you know, if, if any of this stuff was setting up stuff for Avengers 2, if Natalie Portman will be in there for a few minutes or, or whatever. Now, see, I thought that this was going to be the end of Natalie Portman, of her character, at least, of, of Jane Foster. And I honestly thought this was going to be the end of Loki. Yeah. Um, at a point, they made you feel like it was. And I went, oh, huh. Well, they gave him a good death scene. Yeah. And it felt pretty real. It, you know, it, 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 it went on long enough that I thought, okay, well, this is not a trick then. And, and, you know, if somebody is upset by that because it was a trick, then that's probably a valid criticism, except for that it's Loki. Yeah. <laughs> so his abilities to make illusions or whatever uh, are, have just been really really wonderful and to set up that that was something that that his mother taught him that was really neat too i don't remember there being any well i don't remember there being any development of that character of the Rene russo character in the first movie i think she did have a couple of lines but oh they gave her I so much i think she did to try to this. fight off the oh the i the ice yeah the frost giants, frost giants. when they came to uh and Odin was in his Odin sleep. She tried to fight him off for a bit, but they, I think they made much shorter work of her in that film than they did in this one. In this one, she seemed much more capable. And that's good. They gave, Again, they gave her something to do. She had to protect Jane Foster, who was the container for the ether. And, and yeah, they gave her a death scene. They gave her the scene with... I think she had two scenes with Loki. And the, and just yeah the 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 meat that all of these people had to chew was just so much thicker and I I think as a an actor you'd be thrilled to find out that you've got more to do I I haven't really talked about Hemsworth <laughs> he's Thor I love the guy I think he's great I'd love to see him in like every movie they give to Channing Tatum I wish they'd give to this guy but you know it's enough that he's Thor he does a great job as Thor. And he has that those that flowing hair that any woman would probably wish that they could just have. And how thrilled were you when he had his shirt off in that one? Oh, so. wow. You know, it's funny. I, was it you that said some? Gosh, there was somebody that said, oh, you think he's going to take his shirt off in this film? Of course he does. He takes his shirt off in every <laughs> film he's in. But yeah, it was funny because they had that scene, like, second scene. I don't know. It was, like, so early on in the film where he's, like, having himself a sponge bath or whatever the crap he was doing <laughs> before he goes and looks off into the distance and thinks, boy, my rippling muscles sure wish Jane Foster was here <laughs> to rub them and caress them. My rippling muscles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
it's funny. An actual conversation that I remember the person who said it, and I was saying this to you when we saw the scene, there was somebody who was actually talking the other day, or not the other day, it was a while ago now, but they were thinking about going to see, I want to say it was the Wolverine, but was has has Hugh Jackman been in something since the Wolverine? That uh, There was a movie called Prisoners that he was in after Wolverine. Maybe that was the one that she was talking about, where she's like, do you think he's going to take his shirt off in this film? And I was just like, of course he's going to take his shirt off in this film. Look at the guy. If you looked like that, wouldn't you? Um, and she's like, oh, because I'd really like to see that. I, I think we'll go <laughs> see that if he will. Oh, I, I just really like to get... And, she, and I think she used the word chesticles. Oh, what? <laughs> she said, see those big muscular chesticles. Which oh. I, don't, I, I don't know if I'd heard that before. I think I have, but... Somebody calling them chesticles. Chesticles, I think, is how I heard it before. Ah, it chesticles. That's good. Yeah, they have a great philosopher, Chesticles was. Yes. The, uh, not, as, not as good as his uh, older brother, Testicles, Testicles, though. Yeah, he had a ball with everything he was preaching. Yes. But he could get a little too hung up on... Uh... <laughs> One time I heard a uh, comedian who was talking about somebody who apparently had named their child Fallopia. <laughs> and he was like, they named their child Fal This is like a Greek person naming their child Testicles. Oh, that's awesome. Ew. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I'm not even remotely bothered by that. It, it, the shirt off? or The shirt the off testicles? thing. Well, well, naming your kid Testicles, yeah, I'm, I'm bothered by that. But I'm bothered by people that, you know, name their kid Anthony with an F-R. Anyhow, e -E. he uh, he takes his shirt off and the women like it. Good. That makes more money for the movie. <laughs> I just, yeah, I mean, his, his, his muscles are impressive. His arms are impressive and all that stuff. But yeah, at one point you said, yeah, but if a chick took off her arms, we wouldn't be, I'm sorry. Her arms, her arms that would be if really impressive. Venus de Milo removed her arms, we wouldn't be allowed to admire them. And yeah, it's, it's not fair, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, they, they have films like that actually, where girls take the shirts off. Oh, okay. Well, I, as soon as we're done podcasting, I, I need a link. <laughs> Unfortunately, girls are allowed to admire guys with uh, bare chests and not be called perverts. Mm. Whereas guys don't get that. Uh, something about the difference between the two bare chests. I'm not sure what it is. Size? Mm. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so we enjoyed the film. That's uh, what you should take from this. That and sure Chesticles. Did. Well, the, the the one here's one last comment. The Captain America movie, that's the next Marvel Studios film that comes out. It feels like it might be a little bit more dour. Uh-huh. But I don't know, it, that could work either way. Um the first Captain America was was a somber film. And, but but it was still enjoyable. I thought it was a very good film and uh, the one after that is Guardians of the Galaxy. And if it is half as fun as Thor 2, then it's then Thor still twice, twice as, as fun. fun as the first Thor. I, I just, the idea of the exciting, the thrill ride set in space. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm raring to go. I can't wait to see another one like that. And maybe, I don't know where I get this impression, but it seems like Guardians of the Galaxy may be a, a much more fun, much more comedic than perhaps anything we've seen so far. Agreed, yeah. There were very funny things that they showed at the panel at, at Comic-Con. And uh, I, I, I guess you have to have your tongue in your cheek when one of your major characters is a raccoon with like a giant laser gun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see that. That one's in August. Captain America is in April, so... So coming down the pipe. Yeah, about the time this episode is coming out, I think we've got another. What do we have? Does Frozen come out around this time? Frozen and Hunger Games and Hobbit 2 all come out within the next two months anyway. I'm not sure exactly what all their dates are, but I would guess that 
Most of them will come out in November and early December. And the art films hit the uh, theaters on, December, on uh, Christmas Day so they can get in for the uh, Oscars. But yeah, so we'll, we'll probably talk some about those as well, perhaps. I don't know. After having watched Thor and Ender's Game, I'm like excited. I want to go see more films. Oh, good, good. So we're going to stop podcasting about anything but movies, and we're just going to go see movies every week. We're going to stop podcasting altogether and just go see movies. Oh, okay. Week. We can do that, too. All right. <laughs> well, hey, we ended on a happy note. Yay. Man of Steel. Okay, I'm depressed uh, again. Why would you? All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm being anchored. <laughs> I'm Rich Outfield. Uh, Good night, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. Doesn't that make you just feel sick inside? <laughs>